Tyler, I cannot wait to go back to the theater. Yes, yeah, a lot of people can't wait to go back to the theater, whether it be actors or, or um, spectators as well, looking to see shows. And I'm sure there are going to be a lot of really good shows coming out all throughout our local area in the state of Michigan and, and all over the country. As we come out of the pandemic, a lot of great creativity. We've talked to a number of artists who uh, have been in, in theater and come up with really interesting ideas for shows. And it'll be interesting to see how those get put into place coming out of this pandemic. We have so many talented people here locally. And I know that uh, my previous job, when I was on the road all the time, half the time it was like I was living in Chicago. And um, you know when you travel, for work, you go to the office, but then you're on your own in the evening and you're in a city by yourself. Yeah, so a lot of times window. I would uh, be able to get some of these last minute um, tickets to some great shows throughout the Chicago area because I just needed one ticket. So um, it's going to be great when we actually get our theaters up and running again. But what's it like to try to teach the next generation? With us now, let's bring in Carol Knox. He's a professor at Oakland University. So grateful to have you with us. How are you today? I'm great, thank you. I just had my second uh, vaccine this morning. So Very I'm nice. Ready to go. How are you feeling? I'm fine. I'm fine. I had a little headache after the first one, so. Yeah, they say the second one tends to be um, the most side effects. Yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll make it through the next 20 minutes and then I can collapse, so you're fine. <laughs> well, we appreciate it if you can make it through the show, oh, uh, but we'll be watching you for any uh, distress signals. How's that? That's great. <laughs> uh, with that, though, can you tell us uh, what's the last year been like for it's you? Been, it's, it has been insane. It's been, you know, sitting around waiting for things to happen and things to change. It's really... Uh, you know, I, I'm the I'm the associate director of Oakland University's School of Music, Theater, and Dance. So not only am I teaching theater classes, uh, but I'm also like in charge of all our performances in all three areas. And we just haven't been able to do that. And performing is such an essential part of the students' education, and particularly performing in groups. Because it's one thing to perform by yourself, and Zoom has been able to do that. Recordings have been able to do that. But every single art form of the performing arts is a collaborative art form. And being with other people, performing with other people, is really essential. You know, the French horns have to learn how to play with the violins, um, the balance and the timing. And that's the thing that has really, really suffered. Um, and, you know, we closed down last March, and we canceled, you know, 45 performances between then and the end of the semester. And then the fall was just as hard. So what do you think the long-term impact is going to be for some of your students going through this right now, especially the juniors and seniors? I mean, it's it's gonna be hard to, to keep going, but the thing is, it's been the same for everybody all across the country. So everybody has been set back and hopefully you know everybody has found creative ways to keep teaching to keep learning to keep uh to keep at it and then piling it all in at the end what we found out in the fall is because outside contagion is so much less is that through the through september and october last fall uh we just set up and did performances out of doors uh socially distancing the the performers um, putting them in masks, putting them in tennis shoes rather than bare feet. Um, socially distanced the audience is like we made reservations and these six people could sit over here and these this group of two could sit over here. Uh, everybody checking in, everybody doing their health checks. And we felt it was really successful. And not only was it great for us to perform, but the audiences, as you said, were so hungry for anything. And we had probably more people coming to see our strings class perform than we normally do, because people, anything that they could see could happen. And so what we decided to do is take advantage of the warm weather that we're in now, and let's hope it stays, of that, that, that April and May uh, really are some of the best weather we have here uh, in, in Southeast Michigan. And so, We've gone further and put up a stage outdoors of our building. 
um, and we're starting performances uh, next week and almost a daily and sometimes multiple performances a day of music, theater, and dance in a, in a program we're calling OU Outside the Box. I'm prepared. Um, and, we're, um, and, and, and we're trying to like cram in almost a whole year of performances into a month. Wow. And it's, uh, and, and it's um, again, it's a big mix of music, theater, and dance. And um, uh, every, you know, some some are free, uh, some are some are ticketed. Everything needs to be. Um, you need to make reservations, no matter whether it's free or not. No tickets are available at the door because we need to do um, contact tracing. We need to make sure we know who everybody is. And even being outdoors, we have limited seating just because we can only handle so many people. Carol Knox with us here on the Mega Cast. He's a professor over at Oakland University. And with that, what is practice like, though? It's one thing to be able to perform outdoors, but how are practices going? Are those inside? We've been we've been doing a lot of Zoom rehearsals. Um, <laughs> how do you uh, synchronize uh, the music? It be, it, because everyone has a different quality mic and a different quality camera. Uh, th that's that's been really really difficult. In addition to teaching theater, I also play in the steel band uh, and do some other music activities. I do the lighting design for dance, so I'm sort of intimately involved in st in steel band. We get we had a specific program that we could record to a track, and we could all record to the same track and have it come back. It was not very satisfying, <laughs> and so we did a lot of remote practice of just getting recordings, playing with them on our own, coming in to clear things up, working on them one at a time. And then starting starting right after, starting middle of March, we started coming and meeting uh, as a group. And the Steel Bandit, there's about a dozen of us. And we, in the good weather, we will all meet outside. And, and getting together and playing together makes all the difference. On a, on a, on a rainier day or a colder day, Half the group will come in and we can fit like six to eight people in a larger room, socially distanced barriers between us and play part of it. But it's really been like putting all the pieces together and then at the end, finally playing together. There's still, even yesterday's rehearsal, there was still one person not comfortable coming to campus yet and was zooming in, but we had almost the whole band there yesterday. The weather was great, you know, wear jackets and shivered a little bit, but it was great. And we're, we're performing next um, Saturday, the 10th, um, two o'clock uh, performance of the Steel Band and the African Ensemble. With, with acting and, um, and musical theater, they've been doing a lot of individual rehearsals um, on Zoom to do stuff, but um, the play that we're doing that uh, opens around the 20, fifth, I think, of April. It's called The Servant of Two Masters. The cast is only nine people. And most of the scenes are two, three, and four people. And so we do a scene at a time and in a, in a large room, socially distancing. And the whole, the whole show is being directed to be socially distanced so that the actors are always like nine to 10 feet apart. And it's comedy and it's slapstick so that we're just doing you know, we're making it very theatrical. This one person slaps and a person nine feet away reacts to the slap. And that's and it, that's what you get. The audience is sort of all in on the joke of this is how we this is how we have to do it in this day and age. Um, and it, but I think it'll still be greatly entertaining. Um, it's one of the funniest plays ever. Um, and and we're, we're excited to be sharing that. It's so great to have the students still excited about this industry, but are you finding some are dropping out because of the concerns over job security going forward? Because we do know the entertainment business, even pre-COVID, can be very competitive as well. Uh, I mean, yes, it's competitive, but it's not going away. And it's, and it's always growing. And uh, one thing that the pandemic has showed us is that people need it, people value it, even if they don't always value it with their pocketbook, but they certainly value it with their time and they spend their time watching stuff like nobody's business. And so it's always gonna be a growth industry. Yes, it's competitive. Um, yes, it's sometimes hard to break into, but the other, the other thing the pandemic has showed us is that even when we can't get together, 
people are doing Zoom shows. People are finding other ways to be, to be entertaining, to getting their art form out there. And um, we will, you know, keep trying and keep trying to give our students skills, or in my case, learning skills from my students who were way better at anything on Zoom or anything with video recording um, the, uh, than anything than anything else. And so that um, we did. See, some people did take a year off and are coming back. Um, our applications are pretty good. Um, uh, we're a little bit behind in some areas, but we're ahead in some areas. The musical theater applications have been through the roof because I think part of it is that people are saying, I'm deprived from this for a whole year. This really matters to me a lot. I'm going to do what I have to do to make sure I can keep doing this in my life. So you had touched on it briefly with the students. They are so much more tech savvy than we are. And it has been a blessing that we've had the technology that we've had right now to help get us through the pandemic. But how does that also help your students, your theater students, your music students to be able to share their talents with the world? I mean, it just gives it just gives them more tools in their toolbox is that, you know, as you know, the technology has changed a lot in my lifetime. And with computers and the internet, there's all kinds of opportunities for uh, uh, online sharing of art and music and uh, all, all kinds of performing arts. And the fact that students are you know, sort of being forced to find the ways to, um, uh, uh, to do that is gonna just give them more tools in their tunable box to market themselves in as many ways as possible. No artist really makes it in just one medium. If you're an actor, you're gonna do TV commercials and you're gonna do film and you're gonna do theater and you're gonna do television and you're gonna make industrial things, voiceover books, books on tape, or uh, sorry, audio books. They're not on tape anymore. I know, I still say the same thing too though. <laughs> yeah, but so so that, that you know, just, just giving them more different ways to use their artistry to eventually make their living um, Everything, everything's a bonus. Carol Knox with us here on the Megacast. He's a professor at Oakland University. How has the pandemic changed some of the plays and the performances that you're doing? Not in not in a physical sense, but in the dialogue. Um, it's just it's uh, again everyone's rehearsing one one on one. Um, we're, we're 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 trying again. We're also trying to be. Uh, politically active in what we're doing even more so in in the whole political situation that's going on with with um with black lives matter with uh bipoc awareness um we're really trying to create one, one of the things we are doing it seems people are doing more of is more developed work rather than strictly script work so that there's uh elements of the individual actor that they can bring to the process rather than feeling they're just stuck into a role. And um, we're exploring those things and ways to share that with an audience as well. So one thing about the uh, industry, the theater industry, sometimes people forget it's a business. And there are so many other avenues for people to explore within the arena, event promoters, agents, do you guys teach the students about the other opportunities that could be within the genre? Absolutely. Um, I'm, I actually am not an acting teacher. Um, I'm, I, teach, uh, I teach design and theater history. And um, we do have a major in design and technology uh, that our students are very active. All of our students in theater take a little bit of that, but some of them are actually getting their major in that. And it's clearly the most um, employable part of the theater industry. And again, very portable into other aspects of, of entertainment, film, TV, uh, events, coordination, catering, you know, all of these things where it's about meeting deadlines, getting the visual aspect of it out there, uh, stuff like that. And um, again, some of our um, students come here as actors or musical theater, uh, uh, majors and they see that there's another aspect of theater and they move into that instead in part because they're more there there are fewer people competing there are more opportunities there's more flexibility in what we do and our student designers um, are just as key in us getting this outdoor stage up um, the scenic designers are are, are both 
are both students of the two plays that are going up there. Uh, the costume design is being done by students as well. Uh, the sound is being done by students. So they're, again, they're using a lot of these technical skills um, outdoors, just as they've been using them on Zoom um, to get through the rest of the year. Professor, they're so lucky to have someone with your talent and your expertise and background to be able to help lead them in their next journey. For those that may be listening, how can they find out more information about some of the upcoming performances? Um, so uh, Oakland University, outside the box performing arts festival, um, the uh, performances are, would all be listed on our website, Oakland dot edu slash smtd which is the school of music theater and dance um go to the box office um performance is there um we're also still um uh, auditioning for incoming students in the in the fall and that uh information could also be found on, on the website and um we're always open to new audiences and new students well professor we so appreciate your time and we look forward to uh, seeing some of the performances well, thank you very much. Hope you can make it. We do, too. Thanks again. And, we're, and, and fingers crossed the weather is going to be nice for you guys. It's good. I don't want to mention that little S word, but we are supposed to get snow tomorrow. <laughs> I know. I know. But, you know, we've we always, you know, all we've been doing in the past year is pivoting and we'll just continue to pivot. And we know that Mother Nature is going to have her way with us. And we're just hoping that we can find enough time to put in of uh, rain dates and stuff like that for the things that do get canceled. Um, some things will switch to being uh, streamed, um, but we're really hoping that uh, good weather is on our side as much as possible. Well, we do so as well. Thank you again for being with us. We so appreciate it. You're most welcome.